Okay, so in this video, what I want to do is show you how to solve trigonometric equations as well as understand how the double angle and the half angle are going to impact our solutions. Because when I first start teaching this topic with my students, when we get to the half angle and the double angle and identifying those solutions, that's where students are going to start making their mistakes. So we're going to work through three different problems and I'm just going to tweak them just a little bit to kind of help you understand these, um, these solutions. So, the first thing we need to do is, in this case, we have 4 sine square root of x minus 3. And we need to understand, well, what are we looking for? We're looking for the angles that are going to make that equation true. Now, it might not be obvious right now, is it? So what we're going to want to do first is your first kind of tip is to solve for your trigonometric function. And since we only have one trigonometric function in these examples, we're just going to use our inverse operations. If you have more, then you'd want to look into factoring and other techniques, which we'll talk about later. So the first thing I'm going to do is isolate my sine of x. Now again, it might be important to understand that sine squared of x, we also can rewrite like this, right? So to solve for sine of x, I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. 4 sine, I'll just go back to the sine squared of x equals 3. Divide by 4, divide by 4, sine squared of x equals 3 fourths. Now, to solve for the sine of x, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now here's where students make their first mistake, right? Um, remember, when you're introducing the square root, you have to include plus or minus. And also, you can distribute the square root of 3 in the denominator as well as to the denominator. So now we're looking for, well, what is the sine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3, I'm sorry, yeah, over 2. Oh, why did I rewrite that? I don't know. <laughs> the square root of 4 is going to be 2. So I just took the square root of 3 and the square root of 4. So to understand this, I think it's easiest to first recognize this, like, what are the solutions on the unit circle? Because we are only going to be looking for solutions here on the unit circle. And, but again, things are going to change here once we get to this 2x and the x divided by 2. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is identify, well, let's go ahead and look at the unit circle here. Right? And recognize, well, when is sine of x going to equal square root of 3 over 2? And hopefully you recognize that value is going to be at this angle, which is pi over 3, this angle, which is 2 pi over 3. Then we have this angle down here, which is going to be a 4 pi over 3. And then last but not least, we have this angle over here, which is a 5 pi over 3. So the angles that make that equation true on the interval of 0 to 2 pi are going to be 0, not 0, sorry, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So it's fairly simple and fairly straightforward when you're trying to find the solutions of a trigonometric equation on the interval of 0 to 2 pi when you just have that one angle. Now what happens though when we have this 2x? So we're going to look at this algebraically as well as graphically to, make, to, make it under, to understand how we can be able to identify all those solutions. So the first thing is, again, we're going to use our inverse operations, just like we did before in the other example. Now, the key thing to understand here, though, is when you go into using your inverse operations, sorry, this is a sine of 2x, right, what should you do first? Should you get rid of the 4 or the 2? Well, again, when we're solving equations, we want to work from the outside in. So you're going to divide by 4 first. Then we have a sine squared of 2x, again, is equal to your 3 fourths. So again, we can't get rid of this 2. We can't divide by 2 until we get rid of the squared. And the same thing goes for the square root. So the sine of here, 2x, is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. And again, we can't divide by 2 until we undo the sine. So here is what, here's where things kind of like make the mental jump, right? Well, how do we get rid of the sine? We don't want to take the inverse sine because the inverse sine is only going to give us one answer, right? And we recognize that the sine of an angle is equal to four different answers. So there's a couple different ways we can look at this. And one way we can do this is what we call substitution. So we can say let 2x equal theta. And then if I say, well, what is the sine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2? Now, you could say, all right, well, those answers are going to be all those answers right there, right? Um, <clears throat> but we have to go a little bit further step. And to understand this, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to the graphical approach, or I'm going to show you the graphical approach here for sine. And so you can see why these are the solutions, why you can see from the unit circle, but what about graphically? Why are those the solutions? So that is going to be the sine graph. And the sine graph has a height of 1 and as well as a 
minimum height of negative 1. Now, let's have the square root of 3 over 2 be right over here, and negative square root of 3 over 2 be over here. So on the interval, on the interval of 0 to 2 pi, you can see that the graph sine of x, or sine of theta, sine of x, is equal to square root of 3 over 2 for pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, as well as at negative square root of 3 over 2 at 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Right? You can see that's where those four solutions are. Now, if we're looking for, when we're trying to, what happens is when we take this double angle, like what is that doing to the graph? Well, if you think about it, if you remember, the double angle compresses the graph. right? So if you're going to look at this, now what is happening here is not only do I have one period, but now my period got changed from 2 pi to pi. So now I'm looking at my graph here, 1, negative 1. And I know my graph is horrible, sorry. But what I want you to see here is now I've doubled up the solutions. Not only do I have my first two solutions that I found over here, right? That was on 0 to 2 pi. But what happened is this graph got compressed to right here. Now I have these other two solutions, right here and right here. So how do I go about finding these? Well, actually, first of all, how do I go about finding these? So to find these, you can just divide these answers by 2. And when you divide them by 2, that's, gonna be, that's how you're going to go and find those answers. Because instead of solving for x, you're solving for 2x. So just divide, them, divide all these by 2, and there's your solutions. But what about these? So to find those, we need to understand the relationship between our solutions. And what I want you to see is, if I have, a, if I have this graph, to get to my next answer, I'm going to have to add pi. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to add 2 pi. Right? And if you think about this, like for every one of these answers, if I add 2 pi to it, it's going to take me to another solution. If I add 2 pi again, and 2 pi again, and 2 pi again. Over here, I can add 2 pi, and 2 pi, and 2 pi. However, we don't always have to add 2 pi. What we can do is, we can actually just add pi. So if I take this solution and add pi to it, that's going to take me down to this solution, which is 4 pi over 3. And if I add pi again, that would take me again over back to 13 pi over 3. Right? And it keeps on going over. The important thing is, I can represent all solutions of this equation, all solutions of this equation, by saying, let me do it over here, theta equals um, pi over 3 plus pi n. And then I can also say that to get to these two solutions, I could say theta equals 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. Now, I probably didn't leave myself a little space here. Because we're not really dealing with theta, are we? We're not dealing with theta anymore. We're dealing with, we're actually dealing with 2x. We just used theta to understand what was going on. So therefore, I can rewrite this as 2x equals pi over 3 plus pi half sin. Now, divide by 2. x equals pi over 6 plus pi, I'm sorry, pi n. What am I doing? Pi halves n. OK? And then I could do the same thing here with the 2 pi over 3. So in this case, I'd have 2 pi over 3. And that's going to be plus pi n. Sorry, that's 2x. And then you divide by 2. So x is going to equal a 2 pi over 6 plus pi halves n. Now again, you can see that what we have here is all solutions, right? And we're just trying to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Well, if you start writing these out, Right? If you take pi over 6, right, and then you add pi halves. Now, pi halves in terms of 6 is 3 pi over 6. So 3 pi over 6, sorry, that's pi over 6. 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is going to be a 4 pi over 6. If you add it again, that would give you a 7 pi over 6. Add it again, that's going to give you a 10 pi over 6. Pi over 6. Add it again, if you pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. Um, and then if you add it again, though, that would give you 13 pi over 6, which is larger than 2 pi. So it's not going to fit within our restriction. So then I go to my next one, which is 2 pi over 3. So again, we have a 2 pi over 6, which again, we could reduce to pi over 3. right? We could reduce this one to 2 pi over 3 as well. I'm just kind of, for the sake of the video, I'm leaving them like this. If I add pi over 6, which is again 3 pi over 6, that would give me a 5 pi over 6. I could do it again, which would give me a 8 pi over 6. 
and I could do it again, which would give me 11 pi over 6. Now, what I want you guys to see is how many solutions do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And how many solutions am I supposed to have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? So you can see that's what happened. We doubled up those solutions because when you have this 2x, you have this double angle, what that's doing to the graph is that's compressing it. That's putting two periods within our interval of 0 to 2 pi. So it's helpful to find, identify the solutions here on the unit circle, but once this gets compressed, I think it's helpful to understand to find all the solutions, and then you simply just add your extra intervals. Now let's get to our last example. Now on this last example, we have what we call the half angle. Now as far as the inverse operations are, are involved, it's going to be the exact same thing, right? You're going to add 4, add 3, divide by 4, take the square root, and you're going to get a sine of x divided by 2 is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now you could use substitution like I did over here just to kind of make the math a little bit easier, but you don't really have to, right? We already know what the solutions are. Let's go back to what our all, all solutions are, which was theta equals a pi thirds plus pi n, as well as a 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. So those are going to be all the solutions, right? That represents every single solution that we have. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that as a, well, actually, we can just write this as um, x over 2 equals a pi over 3 plus pi n. And then also we have a 2 pi. I'm sorry, x over 2 equals 2 pi over 3. x over 2 equals like 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. Now over here, we went ahead and divided by 2 on both sides. So over here, what we're going to want to do is multiply by 2 on both sides. And then for what we'll get is x equals a 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Over here, you multiply by 2 and you get a x equals a 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Now the thing that I want you guys to see here is what's happening with the graph. Well now guys, I know I kind of ran out of space here, but the graph is what's happening is when we take this graph, if here's 2 pi, like or here's 2 pi, here's 4 pi, right? It's taking the graph now now the graph is not going to complete a period, not until 2 pi, but it's not going to, it has to wait until 4 pi that the graph is going to complete a period, right? So when we have this half angle, that's stretching out the graph. So now when we're looking at how many solutions are we going to have, right? If here's 1 and here's square root of 3 over 2, you can see there's only going to be our two solutions. And again, that works because here you can see our only two solutions in this case is going to be a 2 pi over 3 and a 4 pi over 3. Because if you add 2 pi to either one of these solutions, it's going to be outside of your restriction. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we have the impact of our half angle as well as double angle when solving trigonometric equations. Cheers.